Mark Harmon with VIB TV. We're here today with Jess Mogapo. Jess is a candidate for Vallejo City Council. We're here in beautiful Alden Park on Mare Island, and we're going to ask Jess a few questions. So, uh, Jess, uh, and I, I can call you Jess? Absolutely. Okay, because that's what you, you prefer, yes. Jess. Yeah. Yes. Great. Well, first question really is why run? Why, why go for the City Council in Vallejo? It, it, it tends to be a thankless job in a lot of cases. So, tell me about your motivation. I know. I, uh, the, there are two things happening in, in our city that are positive. Uh, one of them, uh, as you know, the city exiting uh, Chapter 9, and our school district is about ready to get out of receivership. So you got those two pluses. And uh, uh, I want to run for the city council, and if I'm elected, I'd like to help get the city uh, onward to full economic recovery, because we're already in position to do that. Thank to the thank you to the incumbent uh, council who, by the way, did the hard work. They rolled their sleeves for three long years, Mark, a little over three years. Oh, I know. I sat through they, just about every council yes, meeting. Yes, and and more. You know, 52 Tuesdays a year. They've ex far exceeded that, and uh, they put us in position now to where we could really take off and uh, okay. get better. Now, when when since we we started with uh, getting ready to take off. Tell me a little bit about your vision for, for the economic development and, and, and progress in Vallejo. Specifically, word on the street is that you're a man who would like to see a casino on Mare Island. Um, um, it's not so much a casino, but uh, uh, that's something I'd be willing to look at. But the, the motivation is we want to bring a significant investor with deep pockets. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if we're talking about the North Island, uh, 157 acres, just the demolition alone uh, and prepping the site will cost $8 million. Right. Uh, and then to build... Or maybe more. Or maybe more. To build a structure uh, that's going to meet all the codes, you have to dig maybe 30 some feet to, to create piers. Right, to pilings, the structure. For, pilings. For earthquake and so exactly. on. Exactly. So you, you can't have a, a business uh, uh, without significant bank account to, to really bankroll the development at that right. site. So you're, you're pretty much, in other words, um, you're kind of open and on board with what they're doing with the, the RFQ, the Request for Qualifications process. In other words, find someone that has the financial qualifications and get them in there. Right. And you're, you're willing to look at almost anything. So you're not necessarily uh, specifically pro-casino because that, that's kind of the scuttlebutt. So I wanted to... Uh, that that is know. correct because we okay. what we want is a business that will bring a large number of jobs and what we want are jobs that are head of household type jobs meaning a guy can have a job like that and support a family and we need them in large numbers because uh, uh, the unemployment rate is uh, bordering around almost 15 percent so right right that's that's sad. not great not great nationally exactly that's not great yeah. now let's let's look back when you 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 talk about the previous city council you give them pretty high praise absolutely and when we look at some aspects of things that were done in bankruptcy there obviously there are things that maybe they did right are there any areas where you think they may have stumbled or could have done something different well I think they look in in uh, all the right uh, areas uh, particularly uh, labor contracts uh, as you know uh, uh, chapter 9 pretty much busted the existing labor contract and that wasn't their intent but chapter 9 was a necessity measure a also lost which means finding arbitration is gone so the city is in a bit of a stronger position to to negotiate with labor well, well you you're you're a labor guy you got the labor the nod the endorsement yes uh, from the Napa Solano Central Labor uh, Council so so let's take a closer look and, and, and get some thoughts about the, the labor contracts now one of the things that we can look at is the principles of, yes. of labor and the principles of unions. And a lot of that, overall, their concept talks is about fairness, really. When I look at the situation in Vallejo, we have our IBEW workers, yes. who are the people that kind of do all the maintaining of the city, the running, the, a lot of the day-to-day -day stuff that keeps the city in operation. And they had to come up with the $3.6 million in cuts. Meanwhile, the police got a 6.29% raise. Correct. Now, and, and another one this year. So they're over seven 
they were probably around seven, seven and a half or a little more percent raise in two years in a recession. Now, when I look at that, I, I, I want to know what your thought is about the fairness of that within the framework of the, the ideals of labor. What, what do you think about that? <clears throat> well, uh, labor in general, uh, we saw fire uh, give some concessions. Uh, they did. The police have not done that. Uh, IBEW took some hits and... Major hits, yeah. yeah. And what we have to do, Mark, is uh, uh, if I get elected around, I believe it's around June, is when the labor contract is going to come up again for renegotiation. Right. And uh, regardless of how we feel uh, about labor and the contract, we have to be realistic. Right. Uh, as you know, our budget is flat uh, for five years. And last night at the forum, I mentioned, look, we know where we want to spend our money. We hope it's flat for we, five we years. We hope it's flat for five years because the revenue side is a projection. Right. We don't know if it's really going to materialize or not. Exactly. So. Uh, to, to even uh, talk about uh, a raise, uh, uh, more benefits would be really premature at this point. Do you, do you, think, do you think that the, the police in Vallejo should, should be paid as much as, say, FBI agents in the Bay Area? People say they're the highest paid and uh, uh, if you look at the pay scale around the Bay Area, there is some truth to that. Um, and uh, uh, Vallejo PD, um, uh, some of them uh, don't live in the city, but that fact has nothing to do with performance. The, the truth is though, uh, if you set aside the pay scale for a moment, the numbers are very low, Mark. They are. 95 they are. Uh, you know, out of 127, I think, right. at one time. And policing, you can be creative, you can use technology, you can give them all brand new cruisers, but the bodies aren't there. 95 well, in a city of 120,000. I, I want to give you a quote. At the March 24th, 2009 City Council meeting, Police Chief Nicolini, in a, a, what I would describe as a moment of agitation, okay. um, stated what he, the position of the VPOA, of which he's not part, mm -hmm. so let's be clear, but he was saying, that we, meaning he, the management, because he's management, spoke to the police union and the VPOA or the association, as they right. call themselves. Right. And their position is, and their, as he stated, is quote, "cut the staff as much as you want. We want to be paid." So uh, basically, <clears throat> what I'm, I, I'm I'm driving at is is, is this, Jess. With anyone that gets the the endorsement from labor, mm -hmm. when you look at what has occurred in the city of Vallejo and you look at some of the things that have been done by labor in the city and how contentious it's been mm -hmm. and the fact that we have police officers who are paid 25 to 30 percent more than Bay Area FBI field agents who have a higher educational requirement uh, who you know, it's also very competitive to be an FBI agent. Yet, yet our police are paid 25 to 30 percent more. Uh, FBI agent in the Bay Area, we looked at the pay differential, starts at 68,000. A Vallejo police officer starts at 102. Right. Now, they always say we want to be comparable, but when you look at the the little group of comparable cities, right, you got to ask yourself: Isn't this a sort of a market fix in a sense? because there are very qualified law enforcement people who are getting 25 to 30 percent less. So it, it's kind of like that expression when, you know, these guys who say, my country, right or wrong, okay? And so I look at you as a, a labor-endorsed candidate, mm -hmm. and, and the thing that I really want to know is this. When, when it comes time for the contracts, are you going to be the guy that says, I'm pro-union, right or wrong? Or are you going to be the guy that says, I respect union, but I'm going to stand up for the citizens? Because in, in a lot of cases, in Vallejo, that has not been the case. And it becomes a vicious circle, because what happens is, labor gets, specific labor groups, some labor groups get shafted, like IBW. Other labor groups are making 25 and 30 percent more than FBI agents. So they're doing spectacularly, some of the highest paid in the country. Right. So the question is, when the labor contracts come up in 2012, no, we, I'm not saying I would support someone who says I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick it to these guys, but someone who's going to say, you know what, 
I, I, I'm going to look at it, and when they're right, they're right. And when they're wrong, I'm going to put my foot down. So, so are you that guy? And, and, and tell me your thoughts about that. And, 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 and convince me, Jess. Uh, absolutely, Mark. The, the, uh, what I want to do in the council is do what's good for the people of Vallejo in general. Uh, when I interviewed with Labor, um, uh, one of the things they're just looking for is uh, the ability to speak to the council, and it's not against the law to do no, that. No, of course not. They, and uh, it just should always be a discourse. It, I, exactly. I, I don't object and to that at all. How else are we going to know of course. issues right. if they don't right. talk to us? But, so but, my door's open. But when they're over the line, will you call them on it, Jess? I will. Okay. Look, uh, myself, if I get elected, I'll carry one vote. I don't. Right. You need the majority to do anything in the council. And with labor, you have to look at the budget. Uh, and, and right now, even though it's balanced, I, I mentioned to you, we know where we want to spend our money on. But the revenue side, uh, I talk about this as a scale sure. at the forum, but on the revenue side, it's all projections. So uh, assuming uh, that I take a position where whatever the union wants, I'm on board 100 percent. I may not be able to do that because the the budget won't let me. Uh, but that's well, not the and, position. And, and but and of course the reason that I I'm I'm putting a lot yeah. of pressure on you. That's fine. I'm squeezing you on this. That's fine. Is because for years and years and years, the budget wouldn't let us, and yet council members, who were beholden to the union special interests, wrote the checks. Yes. That they shouldn't have. Right. So I, I see that as, as critical, as, as pivotal, and as crucially important for Vallejo going forward. Yes, and decades later it came back and, to bite us. And of course the, the result, the, the, the statements that you get from labor is, why are you blaming us? We negotiated good contracts and the people you elected approved it. So we, the voters, and I as the guy who gets to ask the questions for whatever reason, um, I, I, I've got to be vigilant and I've got to ask that sure. because we have to break the cycle and we want to be fair to everyone, but we need to, to be fair to ourselves in terms of fiscal responsibility. Absolutely, and that's a fair question to ask. And again, uh, uh, it's difficult to uh, address the issue specifically, uh, but if I get elected, uh, I'm not an incumbent, so I'm not privy to a lot of information. But I think around the June time frame is when you really lay out the contract, and it's open for renegotiation at that point. Um, uh, I care about uh, the working men and women of the United States of America. That, that sure, our country was founded. Sure. But but uh, I mean that's. I'm just yeah. going to cut you off there. Go ahead. Because, because in a sense, like I say, the the. The, the policies that we've seen in Vallejo have not cared about the working men and women in a sense because the IBW workers who are the lowest paid took the biggest hit and you know I mean the 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 average total comp for a police officer who is benefits is, is, is over 230,000 in the city of Vallejo right and and that that really to me is is it's wealthy sure we, we need to look at that. We need to yeah. take a hard look at that. Uh, overall, about 157 employees have been cut since, right. since May of 08. So, uh, uh, again, I mentioned fire. Uh, it made some concessions. They did. Uh, unfortunately, um, most, of the, those, most of those concessions are second tier. So until people start retiring, because obviously we can't touch a vested benefit because of the Constitution, it's it's not going to help us that much, you know, but it's a good it's a step, and I give them I give them points for for doing something. Right, and I think uh, uh, open dialogue is going to be important with the PD. Um, I think the numbers are very low. I mentioned that earlier. I agree. I, I think we should be around 120. Yeah. And and then a lot of people when when the contract was approved, I can tell you uh, at that council meeting, people lined up and said, "You're you're crazy." This is a terrible idea, and it's going to mean we have very few police. And the council members who were the ones that had the close relationship with labor said, mm -hmm. we're doing this because we believe in protecting our safety. And the result was exactly the opposite of what they said and exactly what a lot of citizens lined up and said, hi guys, there's no way we can do this. It's going to mean we're $12 million behind the eight ball. 
and there's going to be very few police left in the city of Vallejo, and lo and behold, that's what happened. So, right. anyway, Jess, I, I, I've hammered you enough on this on this topic. <laughs> that's okay, Mark. And it was something that obviously I, 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 I had to do because it's it's important, and we need we need to know that people are are, are going to hold the line in 2012 because otherwise we're going back in bankruptcy. Exactly. And it ain't going to be pretty. No, we don't. We don't want to go back in front of the judge and. Uh, no. And, you know, the labor endorsement, uh, I want to win the election, but it doesn't mean uh, the candidate that was endorsed is beholden to labor. Um, everything is transparent in what we do. As you know, you've been to many of the council meetings. Uh, well, not, I wouldn't nothing, say everything's not, transparent. Well, well not, nothing, nothing is, everything is uh, subject to audit. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I'll sure. say that. Sure it is. Sure it is. Well, I mean, yeah. Anyway. Moving forward, yes, sir. We, 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 we've talked about the expense side and, and, and uh, you know, the issue about our need to, to control and curtail expenses. So tell me more about your, your vision for, for economic development and, and how you're going to play uh, a role in that area. Right. Um, I see, uh, I mentioned the city is now in good position to really take off. Um, the first thing we need to do is we need to understand the top 100 highest taxpayers in Vallejo, the businesses. Mm -hmm. We need to know them, we need to have a town hall meeting with them, we need to talk to them. We don't want them to leave Vallejo, we want them to stay and expand. Um, the other part of the uh, economic uh, development will be taking a more aggressive, uh, proactive role in, in soliciting investments to our city. Uh, the RFQ format is great, I think it's about time. The RFPs, we got pretty drawings right. and beautiful plans right. that never panned out. RFQ is, hey, are you for real? Yeah. Show me the money. No more rainbows and unicorns. No, no. We, and we've done enough of that. And right. we paid dearly in terms of delays. Um, and so we need to seek uh, real investors uh, who will bring jobs to, to our city. Um, I look at the waterfront and I, I typically close your eyes, think about Pier 39 and superimpose a scaled down version of mm -hmm. that in our waterfront. Solano 360, uh, I think the neg negotiations will be coming up. Of how much, of how big a slice of that pie are, is coming to Vallejo? Because you know the county owns Right, the, the revenue programs. sharing right. is a big issue. And 65% of, of the development there is earmarked for uh, uh, entertainment. So you have the amusement park, 65% of Solana County for entertainment, improvements in the waterfront, the existing golf courses, and the one at Mare Islands for sale. I'm not sure what's going to happen yes. to that. But we not only become a college town, but we, al we also become a tourist town where people will come to Vallejo and spend the money in Vallejo. And we benefit through uh, sales taxes. So, right. so, Jess, we were uh, talking a little bit about uh, the revenue side and economic yes. uh, development. Right. And, and that kind of leads into Measure B. Okay. And I guess really the question is this. If Measure B fails, then what? What we have to do is uh, uh, try to find other means to uh, generate revenue. It's, it's not going to be immediate. It's going to be long term. Uh, anything I want to propose or any of the candidates or even the revitalized economic department of the city proposes, uh, Mark, it will easily take a couple of years, three years before anything would come to fruition. And so we have to continue tight tightening our belt. Uh, we have to look for other sources of, of uh, uh, donations, grants. I believe there's money left in the private sector, uh, uh, such as what Kaiser did when they allowed us to uh, cover the payroll of three police officers for three right. years. But that's small potatoes it's compared small potatoes to 9.8 million. And, and temporary. And it's right. temporary. Um, but that's all we can do. Right. I, I think I think it's going to hurt if uh, Measure B uh, fails. Ultimately, it's up to the voters of our city. Uh, it's out there uh, for them to look at. And that's why, and I might be the lone voice in this, our, I argue that it's a bit of a sacrifice uh, where we pay more in taxes but the return is more immediate, mm -hmm. uh, $9.8 million for 10 years before it sunsets, and it'll fix the roads. Uh, we could hire more police officers, not necessarily at this $200,000 a year salary, of course not, 
uh, we might be able to hire more firefighters and reopen another two or three fire stations that have been shut down. Um, we just have to be creative, we have to think out of the box, and um, I don't know how much time I have left on this question, but I, I really think that the, uh, the economy and the schools are connected. 40% uh, dropout rate, uh, negative reputation, sure. even for our elementary school. What, what do you think you can do as a council member to help the schools? I, I think that uh, even though we don't have uh, direct jurisdiction, over Vallejo uh, Unified School District, that we could partner with them, we could dialogue with them, and we can actually help them. Uh, as a councilman, I'll have a voice. I can write letters. <clears throat> as an ordinary citizen of Vallejo, who's gonna listen to me? Uh, but I think there are uh, uh, potential uh, grants out there. Uh, for example, if we're about to cut uh, music, art, sports programs, which we have done, uh, uh, we could go to uh, the public uh, sector and, and request for donations to keep those programs afloat. So you, so you might be willing to, to lobby on behalf of the school district Absolutely. for that sort of thing? Absolutely. I will. I'll travel if I have to. Right. Uh, and uh, the same thing for our city. Uh, as a councilman, I'll have a voice. I can go to Sacramento. I can go to Washington, D.C. and speak on behalf of our uh, city and the citizens of Vallejo. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be quiet anymore. We can make noise and ask for help. Well, so you say you're willing to, to go to uh, to Washington D.C. even if you have to, and and and, and lobby. Um, what about some of the legislation now that that's uh, in Sacramento? Uh, are you familiar with AB 646? Uh, no, I'm not. I okay. I was focused on 26 and 27, which is the uh, another assembly bill about redevelopment mm -hmm. and. Um, some some of the legislations I may miss because I'm so focused on what we need to do to help our city. But uh, uh, 26 pretty much killed uh, uh, RDA, Redevelopment Agency. Right. But uh, 27 uh, is the flip side of that, which is a program uh, where some people call it uh, you have to pay to play. In other words, the state wants a cut of RDA money so that they can fund uh, schools throughout the state of California. So there's a little bit of uh, reduced revenue for us, but I still think it's viable. If you go to Sassoon City, their waterfront, if you travel on I-80 uh, uh, toward uh, Fairfield, Vacaville, and Dixon, the development is massive. The growth is just exploding to the west of the freeway, east of the freeway, right. so, so all you, under RDA. Right. So you'd like to see uh, redevelopment agencies protected and, and, and continue? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And it, it uh, certainly the, presents a challenge to a lot, of, a lot of cities around California, it would be the, the disappearance of, of yeah, redevelopment yeah. agencies. And, and obviously, it looks like there's a pretty fair chance that they're going to go away and, and, and not come back. I know, uh, unless the lawsuit prevails. Right and it's back to normal. So um, I don't know uh, the viewing audience if they're familiar with uh, San Diego, but downtown San Diego is a blighted area, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And the people that go to San Diego these days, they see the result of, of redevelopment, RDA. It's tremendous. Um, the downtown area is comparable a little bit to downtown Oakland and the waterfront in San Diego is just absolutely phenomenal. And um, I, that's a real uh, important tool uh, for our city, uh, and I hope it doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. right. Now, you know, I think also of things that, that, that uh, another challenge, sure. if you will, that, sure. that, that you might be facing, which hasn't really come up much, and, and I see it as a very uh, a difficult challenge. Now, as an example, when the city was heading into bankruptcy, we had an exodus of employees. Yes. And the the payouts for accrued benefits and so on came up to something around four million dollars, and it was a major factor in, in pushing us into the abyss. Now, when 2012 comes, and employees know that there's going to be uh, a change to the contracts potentially there may be a, a similar exodus, totaling millions of dollars. So, 
it's just another, I, I don't know what your thoughts are about that. I mean, that's a, another challenge, especially if, if you see Measure B not passing. So it's it's really difficult. And See, just when I look at it, I go, I go man, you are running for a, a, a challenging job. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Um, and, uh, but I, I'm a little bit more optimistic. Mm -hmm. uh, I, last night I mentioned that uh, uh, some people will say we're, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We've exited the tunnel. We're, uh, we have sunshine. We have uh, a real potential to, to really make the city of Vallejo shine. Uh, it, we're not the gateway to anything. We, we can be our own uh, jewel in, in centrally located. Um, right now, people just kind of drive by right. Vallejo. Right. We need to change that. We want them to stop. Right. And, and, and spend some money in our city. Yeah. Well, it's it certainly, I mean, we certainly are unique in that we're, we're close to San Francisco, we're close to Napa and the wine country. Right. Uh, we have one of the only undeveloped waterfronts in the Bay Area, all these things. I'm and with and you. when I moved here in 99, I, I looked and I, at this place and I said, I, I, I can't lose. This place is, is, is really on the way up. It, I believe that. And uh, there was a dark cloud uh, hanging over us for three years and um, I like to repeat uh, the same thing I've said in forums before uh, the incumbent council mark you know what they've done they it wasn't easy uh, they well see I think we, we, we differ on that because I, I look at the incumbent council and what they achieved in bankruptcy and I see it as a litany of missed opportunities they couldn't so, do so much. So maybe I'm they, a, a glass half empty guy and you're a glass half full guy. Probably. We, we could settle on that. But, but, but meet but, me in the middle and, 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 and well, tell me your thoughts. Well, yes, the, the, the city is looking for uh, improvements. Uh, uh, they want uh, the best public safety. They want clean air. They want jobs. They want decent homes. They want all of that. But uh, really the council from the time we filed, uh, May 28th, 23rd, 2008, their hands were tied. They have to deal with the courts. Of course, yeah. And it's it's it sometimes unfair to a council member who got elected during this period because they want to do great things. No, there's no money to do great no things. There's no money to do great yeah. things. So that's all I'm saying. Right, right. No, absolutely. Absolutely. But, and, and you know, look, like what I'm saying is, you know, that, that I guess in a sense, I see we had an opportunity to make a lot of changes that we didn't. Uh, and it may not have been possible. It may have been impossible. Nonetheless, we were one of the only cities to enter into municipal bankruptcy in recent memory, and and we did a lot of a lot of things that were being done for the first time. It's a distinction distinction we want to put behind us. Yeah, one we we, we <laughs> rearview mirror exactly. So so what do you see as the the the, the biggest issues? Just kind of give me some bullet points. The biggest issues for for the city going forward. The, the biggest issues are revenue, uh, and that ties into economic development. The second biggest issue is public safety. Um, uh, you can be creative in policing, use video cams, uh, you know, uh, the numbers just are not there. And, right. and Mark, I want to repeat, I think the number is about 120 to control criminal activity. Mm -hmm. uh, in my neighborhood, we have a neighborhood watch, which is working well. We communicate by email just two days ago. Uh, one of the homes got hit. We knew immediately. Uh, right. And uh, but uh, public safety is number uh, number two next to revenue. Nothing happens without additional revenue. Then we have public safety. Uh, I think we need to be up to about 120. I think we can do that. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 as far as our fire, firefighters and paramedics, uh, I think we're at 72 right now. Still low. Uh, uh, we want them to be able to respond if we dial 911. And the, the third most immediate thing is the school system. I sat down with uh, uh, four ladies who have young children, and this is what they told me, Mark. By the time their kids are in seventh grade, they're getting out of Vallejo. Uh, they, they're not happy with the elementary school system. They fear our high schools. Uh, uh, the dropout rate is tremendous at, at about 40 percent, and there's this feeling of uh, having unsafe high schools. Right. This is straight from uh, people that live in our community. We need to stop the exodus of young families out of Vallejo. 
We need to encourage young families to come into Vallejo. We want to encourage businesses to come to Vallejo. And we can't do that by just sending mere RFQs anymore. Mark, if there's money, I want to engage in massive advertising like mm -hmm. many other cities do and promote what's good in our city using television and the internet. But right. We've not done enough of that. No, well, we, All they we, see is the negative. Yes, yeah, well, there's been a, a, a obviously a tremendous <laughs> negative media campaign around Vallejo. Yeah. And uh, in a sense, sometimes I feel like other cities in the Bay Area who are also going through tough times almost sort of like to point and go, well, we're not as bad as Vallejo, which is, is not a good position to be no. in. And uh, there are a lot of positive uh, attributes to the city. But it, it, tell me a little bit, and I usually do this early in, er, earlier in the interview, but tell me a little bit about how, how you think your, your background and your experiences uh, qualify you to be on city council and to work on all these uh, ideas that you've, you've been telling me about. Right. Um, um, I, uh, my background is the military, and for five years I... I, I started at the lowest rank, and uh, after about five years, I was offered a, just a golden opportunity to get a commission as a naval officer. This was this was when um, President Reagan was uh, trying to build a 600-ship navy, uh, which was a pipe dream. We we never got there, and uh, the current global situation does not require such a massive naval force. But that, that's what opened the door for me to get a commission. Uh, they were looking for people to, to join the officer ranks and uh, they, they uh, sent me a letter and I accepted. And the last 20 years of my naval career was as a naval officer. I belonged to a, a community called Supply Corps Officers and we're basically the business managers of, of the Navy from uh, inventory management, fuel management, financial management, logistics, international logistics. The Navy is global, as you know. And uh, that was the, the highlight of my career, was being on an aircraft carrier, uh, supporting logistics to keep the airplanes flying. So fuel, yeah. tires, Exactly, all you these name it, uh, aircraft parts. And there was a time when we went inside the Persian Gulf, uh, just briefly, uh, uh, and and in the past, the Navy doctrine does not allow us to go there because the Straits of Hormuz is so narrow and it could get mined by the Iranians. And that intimidated us. And then new leadership changed that by deploying minesweepers near the Straits. And so we neutralized that threat. We were able to go inside uh, the Gulf itself where we didn't, we're within striking distance of potential adversaries. Um, but the challenge was we were being supplied by the Air Force only uh, two hits a week um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays in, in uh, Bahrain and an airstrip called Fujaira in uh, Jebel Ali. We were, dry, we were drying up. Uh, the planes were breaking and parts weren't coming. Uh, uh, of course the resupply include provisions, uh, parts, mail, personnel. And um, I was instrumental in... Uh, so supplies on the aircraft carrier got a bit like the supply of money in the city of Vallejo. <laughs> Pretty much, uh, <laughs> you, you know, you can't go to Safeway yeah. out at sea. But we we discussed, uh, participated in discussions, bringing in uh, commercial uh, carriers. Not all military equipment is classified, so we started using the HL, UPS, FedEx, and life got good, Mark. You know, we. So we, we, had, we well, how would you? It would come in. It would come into what the the. The base, and then they would fly it to the ship, or how would that yeah, work? Yeah, uh, when we use commercial carriers, they would come into uh, commercial airports, and we would truck the supplies to wherever the navy. And is was. that something that you came up with, or not entirely my idea? But I was a, a part of the discussion mm -hmm. that that did that because two weeks, uh, two hits a week was just impossible. You know, it, it could be a, a canopy to an F-14, a nose tire, uh, a helo blade. It could be anything that would down the airplane. And um, on the carrier I was on, we were flying uh, 38 sorties sometimes a day. And the Navy Admiral, uh, who uh, cannot meet those 38 sorties, would have to pick up the phone and call an Air Force counterpart. Mm. And that's not a good feeling. Mm. So, so you, uh, you got used to dealing with some bureaucracy in the military? Yeah. Bureaucracy, uh, urgency, everything is uh, urgent and immediate. 
we manage, uh, when I was in Japan, uh, I belonged to a supply depot which uh, supplied the 7th Fleet with uh, their material from, from basic provisions, uh, food, to critical uh, ship parts and aircraft parts. Uh, I know the global uh, logistics, how it works. Uh, I know the financial side of it. And I can bring a lot of that to, to the city. Uh, at Mare Island, ironically, Mark, I was the supply officer at the school here. Okay. At Combat Systems uh, Schools Command. And we had a small budget, about six million dollars. Is that how so. you came to Vallejo? Uh, yes, I moved to Vallejo, and I was assigned to uh, the school. We loved Vallejo, and we stayed here. My kids are here. My grandchildren will grow up here. Uh, I wish I can say I'm a second generation Vallejoan or third generation, but uh, I came here to the Navy, and we loved it, and we're here to stay. Mm -hmm. So, do you do you uh, uh, have a career? Uh, now that you're done with the Navy, or are you just retired? Uh, no, I, uh, I actually was going to work for Cisco. Um, uh, there was a headhunter uh, that I was negotiating with. Uh, uh, there was an issue with salary and uh, uh, them wanting me to physically move to San Jose, which I wasn't willing to do. And I ended up working for uh, a construction and environmental remediation company. Uh, uh, I work in Concord. Our main office is in Louisiana. And this company is engaged in environmental cleanup at Hunters Point, Treasure Island, uh, Alameda. We didn't get the job at Mare Island. Ah. CH2M Hill got it. A competitor got it. But so I understand construction. I understand environmental remediation. Uh, and on this island, there's a lot more cleanup to go. I just got uh, uh, a tour by Lennar, which was very beneficial. Uh, in case I get elected, I understand the island more. Um, Things are slow, Mark, but it's slow everywhere. It's the economy right. won't right. let us pick up the pace. No, no, that's won't. what's happening. And that so. certainly is a challenge for Vallejo and for, for cities all over, and right. well, for the world right now. Really, exactly. the world globally. economy is is slow. Yeah, we're so everywhere. interconnected now yeah. globally. So. so, so Jess, is there is there any question that that comes to your mind uh, that I haven't asked you that that you, you wish I had? Um. I, uh, not a, uh, a burning issue, but um, uh, tourism is something I want to really look at uh, if I make it to the city council. Um, I have a different view of the waterfront, uh, uh, perhaps downtown, but I want to look at uh, tourism, I want to look at entertainment, uh, not, not so much the casino, Mark. The casino is an option. Mm -hmm. but. Uh, uh, Solano County Fairgrounds, uh, it may be two, three more years before that is developed, um, uh, shovel the ground. But if you look at uh, where it's located, uh, uh, right by the freeway, if you look at Marine World, and I'm hoping we could keep uh, our Discovery Kingdom. Uh, I don't know their financials. Some people tell me they're shaky. I don't know. I hope we could keep them. I hope they stay afloat. You connect that with uh, the waterfront the positive things that are happening here at Mare Island, we could be a true tourist town. And there's a lot of money involved. Of course, it'll, that'll take time, time, but it's a good goal. It'll take time. It's a, good, uh, yeah. a, laudable, a laudable goal. I know I can at least help get started in that direction. And uh, it's a crowded race, uh, seven candidates, three openings. Who knows, we're not going to know until the 8th of November. But I just, every day I hope and pray the, the people of the city give me an opportunity. That's all I ask. I've Thank served you. our country for 25 years. You know that. And I want to serve our city. Jess, if you want, uh, y y you can speak out to the to the voters. You can look right over there. Okay. And, and uh, let people know why why they should vote for you on November 8th. Um, to the viewers of uh, VIB, and again, uh, initially, I just want to thank Mark Garman for giving me this opportunity. I told Mark how hard it is to raise money and how much it costs to buy an ad at the local papers. Uh, uh, I know he has viewership and if you vote for me, I have fresh ideas. Um, I come from uh, a business man management background, albeit from the military side, um, but I, I do know how to run a business. Um, I have some personnel uh, management. Uh, and personnel relations uh, background from the military 
I have 10 years in the private industry, so I know construction. I know environmental remediation. There's a lot of that going on in our city. Um, I have visions of how we can generate revenue. Uh, a lot of these will take time before they convert into actual revenue that will go into our general fund. Uh, but I, had, I do have solid vision. Um, I have concerns about public safety in Vallejo and I have some ideas how we could uh, improve uh, in that area whether Measure B passes or not. Uh, our school system uh, needs a lot of work. We have good leadership in place with the Vallejo uh, Unified School District. They're very aggressive now, uh, Superintendent Bishop. Uh, but we can do a lot more to help them as a city council. We, yes, we don't have jurisdiction, but uh, in, in this interview, you may have heard some of my ideas of how I think we can help the school district. We cannot watch from the sidelines anymore. The city and the school are connected. Uh, the, the overall state of our schools, the overall state of our city uh, is coming together. We're exiting chapter nine and the school district is coming out of receivership. Two pluses, I think it's a terrific time, a great time. And the opportunity is here, we just have to seize it. Please remember me, Jess Mogapo, running for Vallejo City Council on November 8, 2011. I am hoping I'm one of your choices. And thank you. Jess, you thank you so much. Uh, I am grateful. Thank you so much for being concerned and, and, and doing all that you do for the city, uh, which is sometimes misunderstood. Well, thank you for that. You bet. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Jess. Yes, sir. Thank <laughs> you.